This conference will now be recorded. Would you be doing this instead of Garden Hill across the hallway? <laughs> you ready? Yes. All right. Well, I'll get you guys meeting of the Levy for City Commission to order. Senator Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Here. Commissioner Roberts. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Gandy. Here. The record will show that uh, Commissioner Trudio is not present. Okay. Commissioner Gandy, would you lead us in our invitation, please? You agree with me? Don't bother the word. We just thank you for this awful heat. Uh, I know we're supposed to give you thanks during things like this, but man, it's really difficult. Lord God, I just pray that you would be with us this evening as we discuss the city finances. I pray that you would lead and guide us to make the right directions for our employees, our staff, and our community. <clears throat> Lord God, guide our thoughts, give us the wisdom and the knowledge that we need to make the right decisions. Lord God, we again, we pray for rain, but it will come when you see fit. But we ask for it tomorrow in small increments over the next six to seven weeks at a quarter inch a day would be wonderful. I know that's funny, but that would be nice. But Lord, again, we just thank you. We praise you. We thank you for Son Jesus died on the cross for us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With the tea and justice for all. I the flag, the same in Mexico, the same symbol, the same friendships among the United cultures. You may be seated. Before I entertain motion, only our approval agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as submitted. Second. Motion and second. Approve it as submitted. Any discussion? Commission to correct. If not, Shannon, roll call, please. Commissioner White? Yes. Commissioner Gandy? Yes. Commissioner Bo? Yes. Mayor Roberts? Yes. All right. At this time, uh, I've had uh, the uh, Lovington City Manager is going to address on the water issues. Um, and uh, we didn't know who to expect, but uh, after which, during the public comment, uh, we will, uh, if you would like, you can uh, pub, you can comment on the water or on the uh, action item tonight. That's restricted to those two. Never know if you're going to back house or whatever. Uh, let's try to keep it to a couple of minutes, and uh, we'll see how that goes. I don't expect that. Everybody to say anything to her. So we'll be able, we'll be a little lenient. Uh, city manager, why don't you lead us off? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Mayor, commissioners, members of the public. First of all, because it relates to our budget, I'd like to report to the commission that the latest GRT figures for April came in. Uh, they were eight hundred and sixty-seven thousand dollars. Now that compares to seven hundred and twenty-two thousand. For the same period the year before, it compares to 900,000 last month, which was for March. So this will be the 12th month in a row where we beat the year before for the same period by a pretty wide margin. So that's good news. That's good news. Um, I wanted to read something Mr. Shaw of Norley Hospital um, asked me to convey to the commission because he couldn't be here. I know you have a difficult task ahead of you with water issues. Please know that Norley appreciates your challenges and we want to be supportive. The uncertainty of the water supply to the hospital presents real challenges for us. Equipment depends on a certain water pressure to properly work and sanitation is paramount for a facility such as ours. Your community hospital has a large imprint and impact on Lovington with over 600 employees and over 5,000 encounters a week. We ask that you escalate this issue and seek solutions to maintain our water pressure. Please know that the Board of Trustees and I support your efforts towards seeking solutions. Sincerely, David Shaw. So um, our water situation, uh, we, went in, we went through this last June. However, we didn't have 12 days of triple digits in a row last year. I think we only had one or two. So um, 
We lost water for a variety of reasons. We didn't lose water. We lost supply temporarily yesterday. Um, it's not a supply issue. It's a demand issue uh, right now. We have, because of excessive a surge in demand, um, our wells have been drawn down. So these are the, and, and we have Mr. Gutierrez from the water department here if we want to get into more specifics, but that was three o'clock this afternoon. The two on the top are the tanks out at Navajo, and the two on the bottom are the storage tanks in Chaparral Park. So as you can see, a, a tank that has is 40 feet, 40 feet high, um, this afternoon was down to five or six feet. So this is not a one-day problem. This is not um, blame, blameable, um, you know, due to infrastructure breaks and things like that. As a matter of fact, the outages caused a major break. Um, I wanted to convey to the commission that we need to look at short-term and long-term solutions uh, because this is not going to go away whether you believe in global warming or not. Um, we have 15 out of 18 wells working at this period. Last year, we only had 10. So again, we're producing the water. I have ideas for long-term solutions, but I wanted the commission to possibly consider a short-term solution at least through next week. Um, just by today's, um, I don't want to take credit for the public service campaign that we did yesterday, but just by putting that out there, today's levels are actually a lot better than yesterday. We haven't, I think we had a minor drop. So I just wanted to put it in front of the commission in terms of a, a short-term solution, whether adopting something like the city of Hobbs has in terms of watering, which I think we considered last year, <clears throat> to the possibility of a total watering ban. Uh, we meet again on Monday, so it's very critical. Um, I think there are some long-term solutions that really need to be looked at about how and where we get our water and um, looking at commercial customers that, you know, we need to reconsider some, some arrangements we have about water. We yeah. prioritize the usage of what we can supply, is what you're saying. Yes. Um, just as in the um, solid waste audit that Wendy did with waste management, where we identified issues with billing and, and accountability that had never been looked at, you know, we were able to gain another twenty to thirty thousand a month in revenue. I think those weaknesses exist in the water, on the water side as well. So, um, if you have any further questions, Mr. Bernardo is here. I don't know if you want to add anything to that about, you know, the critical nature of where we are right now, but this is not because our equipment's not working. It's not because we're having major uh, water main breaks all over town. We've had a few, but our pumps are producing. Um, we need to get people to cut back temporarily until the weather um, gets a little cooler. And then we need to look at long-term solutions because this is not going to go away and I'd rather not go through the second June. And I didn't understand for any questions. Great. Can you fix Van Buren and Maine? Van Buren and Maine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we currently. It's a big puddle every day, so I'm assuming that's when we'll catch it because it's on the end. I think about Maine and Jackson. Do we have numbers of what we can produce, whether daily or hourly or whatever, and then do we have something <coughs> that shows our current demand? I've asked Mr. Gutierrez to kind of put that together. We have new pumps on different wells. Obviously, all wells have different outputs, and that changes. Um, but also, our, our city, on average, consumes 8 million gallons a month. Of water, it fluctuates, but so. And I, I'll ask for I've asked Bernardo to do an analysis of what we're currently putting out. You know, if we could come up with something that would give people an idea, 
so that you know do they need to cut 30 percent 50 percent 10 percent you know something and not tonight obviously we're right. we're fresh into this but possibly uh maybe even monday night uh, where we could have some comparisons so that as we're moving towards a conservation uh, uh ordinance or whatever that you know, they would understand our goals just so that we don't have this impact and so that as you and i spoke earlier i think everybody got a feel yesterday of what it was like not to be able to flush your toilet right and so uh you know nobody wants we, we do not want to have that situation but at least they'll understand how imperative along with the critical uh, operations around the city which include our hospital you know would anybody like their mother to be in a surgery at this point at a point when they have to shut down not a good situation or have to be diverted somewhere else so uh, that's some endeavors that we need to bring to the forefront and I'll add that the, we have supplied the hospital with a fire department water tanker, and the county has a 600 gallon water tanker too, but so they have that. And it's on standby 24 7. I understand. And I had that conversation with him. It's just that that does emergency only, and that's 10% of the business. And so for three straight days, um, they had surgery uh, left to Yes, sir. So anyway, this is just comment. This is for everyone that's listening for uh, the paper to have something to put in that uh, the severity of our situation and uh, it's not severity is not the right word. There was critical. So, uh, yes, sir. so so let me under just so I understand a little bit better. So you're saying we have eight million billable gallons per month. That's the average usage. What average. Average usage. Except for one large commercial customer. We'll, we'll, we'll just, we'll just leave what we have right. here. So if you take 8 million, divide that by 30 days, and then divide that by 24, and then divide that by 60, that means we need 185 gallons a minute for one pump. And we have 10 pumps. No, we have 15. 15. We know 10. We'll just stick with me on the 10, okay? because we have another customer that, that uses them. Mm -hmm. So we're just... We're, we're leaving them out of the conversation at the moment. Okay. So at 200, and, so if they average, uh, if 10 wells average 100 gallons a minute, mm -hmm. which we have a couple that are greater than that, we'll talk to uh, WHB, and so we have a couple that are greater, some that are worse, but on the average, we have more than 20. So the question is, where is our water loss at? You know, is is it are we losing it in? Uh, our billable hour, billable stuff, are we losing it in our, this fake wall of anonymity over here? Are we losing it over there? Where, where is our loss? Why is such a, because we have more than plenty based off the water wells we have. The, the deal is, where's it going? Because our customers are paying for it, but we're having, um, based off of 10 wells that you, we have 10 times two, uh, that's nine times more water supply than we're using from our customers. So we need to figure out where our water loss is going because that's just absurd. So our electric bill and everything like that, we're upside down on that. So we need to figure that out pretty quick. So it looks like based off the 10 wells that we pretend we're having that are working, functioning, um, even if it was an eight wells or whatever, we should have more than plenty of supply to overcome the losses we're having here. So uh, that's just a quick math deal. So we need to figure out where that water loss is going. I'd like to put into a plan, something that we can do. Our infrastructure is old and we all know it. We have water lines breaking all around. We all know that too. And as far as I'd like to have something that we can see what it's going to cost us to fix sections, start have a plan, start at one end and just work through. Mm -hmm. Change out lines one at a time. If it's 10 feet, if it's 50 feet, if we can do one a year, 10 a year, 20, I don't know what it costs, but we need to help upgrade our water lines. We all know that. And I say when we're 
getting called out in the middle of the night and if we don't have the material do we have to use what we have to repair it and trust me i i know the pain the guys are going through being out there trying to get the job done it's the same on my end so i'd like to have something that we can figure out how to bring our infrastructure current i know there's a lot of water lines out there yeah. but see about grants see about funding all this here put it together i don't think it's i can't say for a fact because i haven't been down here forever but i don't think it's ever been done with the stuff with the infrastructure we have at the water lines we have we need to start i think we should start now yes sir and just move forward and do a little bit at a time because like scotty said we have a lot of water we do where's it going we don't know we know where some of it is but we don't know where all of it's going and i said when you break your water lines later in the day you have to have the guys go out they're working overtime all that stuff adds up so if you can do it when you plan to do it when you want to do it it's a lot less time consuming it's better for everybody so that's what i would recommend as far as us looking forward to get an information getting a plan figuring out where we're going to start what's our best place and just move forward from there so i think that benefit everybody in the city thank you Mr. Um, I know you have proposed that we're going to shut down maybe park watering uh, for the next few days. Uh, give us some other things that are going to happen uh, in the next few days to, that will help get us through this 100 degree uh, period that we're going to be looking at. Well, we've conducted a pretty thorough social media campaign and, you know, the, the schools have voluntarily stopped watering. The city has voluntarily stopped watering, watering except for a few locations. Nor Lee has stopped. So we're asking the citizens to please stop watering until the end of next week. Um, I think we're supposed to hit a double digit day next Friday. So just to kind of get us through this, and I think that should help build up our, our water supply and our tanks again so we don't get these drops and lose water for two hours while they refill. I'm hoping it can work on a voluntary basis to get the message out there. But then again, you know, how has these restri restrictions in place every summer? Sure. So that's an option. Any other questions? Appreciate it, uh, Mr. Miranda, for uh, putting all that together. Anything further on this issue before we move on? Okay. Uh, this will bring this to our public comment time. Uh, again, like I said, please, if you step forward, state your name, provide your comments on one of those two issues, or one of the two issues that are here. And uh, at this time, I open the podium up to you. No one's jumping up. Okay, seeing no one, we will move on. Uh, brings us, that down. I'm sorry. Mark that down. Brings us to our non-action items. Uh, discussion of the budget. Let's see. Good evening. Good evening. We have to put together. Three different budgets. Um, we have a clothing allowance that Commissioner Fidel was talking about. We have to, uh, had recommendation that it's not good to go with this type of budget. That's from Ethio. Great. So we went ahead and crossed it, you know, kind of put one together just so you could have uh, that's what was that All right. All right. When you when we get to that one, if you'll just kind of give us a synopsis of what was said, what what the negatives are, if you don't mind, just so that 
if there's any questions over the next few days that any commissioner were to have kind of give them a little bit of background so they can call you i know but right. anyway okay. just so, for the record okay so we did put together a cost of living budget for um, the year 2020 we took everybody's salary and we added 5% to it with the 775 percent increase. We also increased um, the pair went up. It's at 8.65 percent and 22. Well, everybody's going up a half a percent, half a percent. So we included that in the budget. Um, insurance is going up a little bit as well. So we included that in on the cost of living budget on the budget. I'm nervous so Okay. Um, we also included a little sheet here in your cost of living budget. And it it's by department. It lists everybody. It shows their new salary, what their insurance will be, what their care will be, what their FICO will be, and it includes their uh, how much we would add to the option for their salary. Just to kind of give you guys a little idea. So kind of put it, summarize it, right, before you drill down. Last year, our starting budget was approximately 9.6 million, 9.7 million. This is without the utility fund. Given the investments that we had to make um, last year's budget, was about just a little over 10 million. With these costs of living increases, uh, it takes us up to about 10.4 uh, million for our overall budget for this year. So that's the five percent. So uh, the end of the year, if, if you projected to the end of this month, uh, our budget this year with the adjustments that we've made, we recapitulate this. Just around 10, a little, a little over 10. 10.1. 10 10.1. Without the utility funds. With, right, yeah. Right. We're just talking about uh, uh, general, the general fund uh, budget. Okay. If we add the 5%, now we're looking at somewhere around 10.5. 10 10.5. 10 so somewhere around 400,000. Right. Okay. We also have um, included the revenues. On a sheet as well, and it comes to 9.8, and that's with the G GRT of 6.5. I mean, 650. 650. Okay. And then the other little revenues that that's with the account little bit other revenues that we put in as well. Okay. And we kind of listed those in the image. Which going off of 650,000 among GRT, I think is. Uh, very conservative. I know the last year has been great, but and I know going back, you know, the COVID year kind of brings down the average, but going off of 650,000 GRT, I think it's somewhat similar to the county basing their budget off oil of 30 bucks a barrel. Did you run okay with this? Budget proposal. What would our GRT have to average to cover that? Eight seventy nine. Eight seventy nine is where it would be for the four hundred thousand. Well, I'm just going off this budget for this four hundred. Okay. So they. These are the things that use GRT. I and she said that it was what did you say that it would our revenue would be at the 650 it was nine 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 million nine million eight hundred nineteen so yes if you take 10.5 million divided by 12 you get 875 pounds um this doesn't I think there's some additional income that is not included. We have two, was it two? We have 2.5 that we need to build the budget on. So that makes 11. Okay, so you're drawing out of the general fund, uh, the current general fund to bring it to whatever you said, 9.8. 9 right. And I think that has been 
talked about previously. Um, so depending on how you, you work it, it can, can bring your GRT number down, adding that two million in. I understand. Right. So, so that's eight minutes. 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 Eight and that was right. So, so. We're obviously giving the commission the weekend to digest this right information and the vote will be on Monday. Understand. Um okay. Could you be able to talk about it so we can get to Oh I with another number she had given us last time I added on the finance director. And this factors in the five percent and then that money they had to pull over and I would I had a set like right at seventy five. So I don't know where eight, 18 is. <laughs> okay. Seven, two, five. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I heard 17, five. Seven, two, seven, two, five. Okay. Seven, two, five. That, that, that makes sense. So that's a big difference. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have that with me. And mm -hmm. you did the division a minute ago and it was eight, what in order to this number is 878, but if we're doing the nine, it's the 818. 9.8. Yes, this seven. number was 878. The 10,000, yes. yes. uh, 10 million, excuse me, 10.5 million. We would have to bring in $878,000 a month in GRT, the city portion. Yes. Okay, if we, if we do that and we don't pull from the general fund. Right. Okay, right. All right, so. Uh, now, my question is, and I'm assuming uh, the 5% would go to all employees, but not all employees are in this. Is that correct? Yes. It, the only employees that we did not include in the 5% was the part time employees. Okay. Okay, because I'm assuming the utility fund. Pays for water employees and everything else. Mm -hmm. So did you pull? Did you pull that uh, department's payroll and everything else into the utility? But I don't know exactly yeah. how you break it out. So in the utility. okay. So the did you separate them out? And that's my question. So this is this is only the employees that come that aren't. Paid out of the utility. Yes, it's the employees that are paid out of the okay. uh, digital. And then we have the, the utility fund is separate. Okay, but the ambulance is separate. Okay, but those they they also got the five percent yes. raise, yes, but it comes out yes. of that fund. Yes. Okay. All right. Just making sure that we're all clear. Yeah. And then on the final budget one we did, we tried to go off of last year's budget. That's what we were told to do with the adjustments. That we and I will tell you a lot of departments are already included in their salaries. Big pay for people. I'm sorry, Betty. Their salaries on some of the final budget one, when you look at it this weekend, you'll see it's a little bit higher than the cost of living because they already included, we went off the last year's budget, and they had already included a, a percentage of an increase. Uh, did they, what did they say, about percent? And they had included like other positions. They wanted to hire positions. So they had included that last year in their budget. And we based the same budget. Is, so what do you get the budget is able to absorb the 5% more than you would think because mm -hmm. it's, I don't want to say harder traditionally inflated higher, but it was accounted for by certain department heads. Okay. Oh, yeah. So it was already figured in. Yes. Potentially, yes, I saw. Okay, so what I mean as we're going through this, how does this this final budget? Okay, this is the final budget as of this year, June 30th. As close to the projections as you can. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, let's look at that. That that's a real number. I mean, we, we projected it now for ten more days, whatever it is. Something like that. Not even like that. Let me do the synopsis here. We broke it down. Well, you can see it. So we have the general, we have the ambulance, and we have the utility bug. That's what this breaks down to this, right? That's still more than all. Okay, Commissioner White is her statement is if you take the 10 million, 10.1 million, I know it's not quite, but it's close. 10.1 million, and you divide it by the 12 months, then you end up at 841.142. So that is what our, in order to meet this budget, the GRT would have to average 841. Now, that's is important. that what happened this year? Did we average the 841 and that brought us to this? Or did we did? I think, correct. if I may. Absolutely. So I think what Mr. Martinez was doing was uh, factoring in um, using up to $2 million of, our, of what's in the bank of our general fund, which is $11 or $12 million right now. Um, I know some of that's encumbered. So if you took the 10.5, you factor in the additional $2 million, that takes you to 8.5. 8.5 divided by 12 months would mean a GRT of only 708,000 a month. Okay. So it's a question of how much of that 2 million do we use? Um, because it was factored in in the, in the, in the building of this budget. So if you can factor in the 2 million, the budget's not 10.5, it's 8.5. And 8.5 divided by 12 months is 708,000 GRTs. Mm -hmm. So it's a question of how much do you want to use that based, you know, versus what we have in the, in the general fund to use. So that would be up to you. So what happens if we don't have the 2 million? Well, it's currently there. I know it is. Are talking about next year? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. I thought of that. Anyone think? Well, um, we can't rely on it. Back up to the eight. We're back up to ten point five. Right. Okay. Um, my next question, based on those terms, are how? What are our reserve situation? You know, we're we're mandated. And I know that we're not there yet. So if we pull 2.5 million out of the general fund, which is effectively out of, they're not, it's not designated but as reserves, but it is reserved. And bear in mind, you wouldn't have to pull that 2 million out in one shot. That's as you're operating. I understand. I understand. But if we if we adopt a budget that at this level and and our GRT while the 650 is uh, a some very conservative number, it is an average over the past several years. When we did this, we had um, eight million, and then we had three. We have a sweep account. We had the eight million, eight million, we had the three million, and the the full cash. So that's like ten, and he's. The way Ed explained it to me is we have enough for a million dollar reserve. We're taking a million dollar reserve. And we have the 2.5 to help build the budget out of that. And Tracy, what was Ed's opinion about the 5% versus not 5%? Did he, feel he really that? didn't have an opinion on it. He, he, he believes that we can do it. Okay. And he doesn't believe in the state of opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, my question is, okay, I understand where we're at, and I understand injecting, injecting the 2.5 million into the budget, but let's just say we have to use the 2.5, and this time next year, 
if we've had to use that 2.5, obviously we have not gained uh, any other uh, unrealized capital by excessive GRT, or we wouldn't have had to use the 2.5 million. So next year we're at we're at a uh, 10.5 million uh, budget for for this. Just to maintain that, we would have to inject at least 2.5, and that's a that's a road that leads us right down. Uh, a dark time. Unless you've been able to implement cost cutting measures along the way. Okay. Cost cutting, are you going to get it? Sorry. No. That came out. Um, no, because they like strip this budget. Well, no, no, what, what I mean is, cost cutting only goes so far. The, the, the thing that nobody wants to hear is the only way we can cover that is your water sewer and, and ways restrictions go up enough to cover those next year. And those will be substantial increases. I know we have what is it, a three percent? Is that right? Two or three percent increase every year in our water, right. sewer, and everything like that, just to try to maintain. But if you're going to put in, inject two and a half million dollars, you're going to have to figure out how to do that solid waste water and, and your, your utilities fund out of your so two and a half million dollars divided by twelve thousand or however many. People we have is how we're going to have to pay for it. So, and on the commercial side as well as the yeah, commercial side. If, if anybody that we have, yeah, that that rate's going to have to go to cover a lot of inefficiencies, right? Yeah, we need the meter. are two million dollars in inefficiencies. Uh, between from what I've seen in my two and a half weeks, um, between solid waste, sewer, and water, um. You're looking at possibly fifty thousand a month, which is six hundred thousand a year that we could potentially capture that we haven't been. But like I said, if we were to put that two thousand in this year, million. or two million in this year, yeah. come next year, it comes calling less than we want to be doing. <laughs> I'm speaking to the choir, but I, I the last thing we want to be doing is giving people raises and then taking the raises away or saying you have to <coughs> eat flies. <Yeah. coughs> Why did that happen? I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, he was interested and he wasn't. I understand. So, um, right. Nobody has to worry about that fly anymore. <laughs> nice catch. Apparently, I was told to shut up. <laughs> Literally, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that, but you know what I'm saying. Yes, sir. I think everybody else needs to. Yes. yes. I'm kind of coming in at the tail end of this budget, uh, but I think you know, my department's budget is I understand. in line. Uh, but I know we're, we're all trying to do the right thing. Yes, sir. I know that we're, we only have April to April, and I know these numbers just popped out, but for that 12 months, what was our average GRT? You know? It was, um, it was like eight months. I figured it was something in the range. I know we had, we had months that were considerably more than that, but it's still right. It doesn't get us here. Or at least we can't bank on it getting us here. So based on our ordinance and are we supposed to have like 27 percent of a i know the state requires 112 to be back but based on our ordinances are we supposed to be like 27 percent of our budget or something like that 27 percent of our budget would be how many you look at the whole budget it's considerably a lot more than that 2.7 million because the whole budget, this is only 10 million, and we, we're going to do 20 something million dollars worth this. Year. I understand, but you know, we're talking about 112, so 112 of 25 million is two, two, two ish. Yeah, yeah that's 112, but our ordinance requires us 27. 27. Yeah, so, so that's, that's a quarter would be uh, well, six million. 
And so a little it, it's north. <laughs> <laughs> just, our, just say our average GRT is for the past 12 months of being one hundred and four thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, and that's been right. That, that is by far based on whatever that the highest GRT the eleven has ever had. Yes. Yes, that's it, consistent GRTs. That that year is a freak year. Absolutely. No argument. No argument. Well, but but you you have you have the hell damage. You have inflation. You have right. a, a multitude of different things that have really diluted this to make it look really promising. So the next right. year is where we find out really where we're at. You know, when we don't have a hailstorm or tornado or whatever. Natural disaster that really bumped it up for us. So the question would be, if you base that, like, what was that? I mean, the was it 2000, 2014? I think it was. Was it? Was there a million it's dollar? Year? It's not. Yeah, fourteen was okay. it? Okay. Uh, whatever year that we had one month that was a million dollars, but we we're in a boom cycle and a bunch of other things. So, I mean, there's there's promise. I, I still think you know. 600 is going to be the basement floor where we always end up no matter what you know but with inflation and different things like that that may have moved up to 630 640 and 700 750 may be the new norm you know we'll only know in a couple of years so we'll only know in a couple of years unfortunately so we're based on shooting in the dark because we got three years of covid that absolutely wrecked everybody's income um and then inflation on top of that so what a disastrous choice we have to make. I took his, the average for the past 12 months, took 75% of the 675, which is right back. Right back this day, yeah. We're right back to where we were, you know, 75%. And, and I know in the past we've had, um, I would, I'm not sure, fluffed up budgets before. Yeah. And we've managed somehow. I don't know how. But we've managed, even when they were probably, you know, by the grace of God, we somehow made it through. Either employees left or quit, and that ever a cycle of you know how things go and maintenance and different things like that. So, um, you know, it, it's not a we fit on actual hard number. This is where it's been. It's either up here or down here. And somehow through the cycle, we've managed. So, we can say that that's where we're at. Managing state, right? Well, that's also cost cutting measures. Um, and making sure that everybody stays in budget. Uh, delinquent payments. Proceeding to move forward on them and see about making them current. So, yeah. Could be possible. I'll say that. Um, <laughs> And what I can remember as far as looking backwards, um, the budget's always been a floating budget mm -hmm. and staying within that has always been very difficult due to basic basic needs. Right. But the employees have always done a good job of when it came down to absolute have to, they always done a, a phenomenal job of bringing it down to I, I can't I can't I can't say nothing. I, I my hat's off to the employees. Which is why we need to somehow figure out yeah. to adjust their income. As I said, I think it might be normal. It's going to be a full time job for a while. Understood. I know you did. Yeah, so we have, we have options out there. We just have to move forward on them. So there's funding out there that we can look into and stuff, and so I would recommend that as much as possible. <laughs> so it'll make it so much easier on everybody. Actually, I think being instead of looking for fun, funding, still very crucial, but I really think that that that's going to just based on the climate I see in our, our government and where they're trying to pull money and spend that money away from us. Um, we really need to figure out our bare bones, what it's going to take, how much it's going to cost our consumer and, you know, to make what we have to have function every time and start to start realizing that some of our, um, our wealth, not our wealth, but we have a disposal well, different things that we receive money to make sure that those, because they will go away at some point, 
we need to make sure that our our basic needs are met and at a rate that well, I mean, we'd like to make it affordable for people, but right. unfortunately, it may be a struggle. Right. And that's why we, you know, make sure that we got stuff put away for a rainy day yeah. and we don't use too much of what we have there. We know what we have right now, but we don't know what we have in the future. No. That's the problem. So we the tenants. Right. Yeah, so. Side note to this budget, obviously we all know that there's 5.7 million for the county, which uh, will go towards our expenses next year, or however you guys decide to do it, uh, whether it's build reserves, use money to get more money for grants, or pay down debt, or any combination. Is there? We'll get to that at a later time. Yeah. They wanted the water infrastructure. Yeah. yeah, they did. They were fixing that. Yeah, sorry, we're going to fix some water. So. Seems to be in the stash. Well, no, I discussed this once. Um, I don't know how to achieve it because the name manager, I may have mentioned it here, um, that we need a a, a separate, not really a system, but a, a safe fall for the hospital. Yes. Whether it be a, a storage tank or something that is filled and has so many actual days of storage that they run and something like that. So even if we had to shut down the entire city, that operation continues to operate flawlessly until we can get back up. I don't know how we're going to achieve that or where money's going to come from. That would, that would be small. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, the tanks only take care of our inpatient and our ER. So um, if there's no water for a specific period of time, the clinics have to shut down. Um, the GI surgeries have to shut down. Uh, so well, my thought process is to bring that in on the main line to where it feeds just you. And that way there would be another storage tank of some sort that yeah. keeps that facility and that area going. We um, have some land you can go <laughs> well, like we are coming up with that, that stuff that slips through our hand very quickly. But we need possibly a I don't think a well would do that because we're, we still have the same problem. We have to look at our well field as from what it is. It's south of town. Where's the hospital? On the north side of town. It's been great if they had built it on the south side of town, but yeah, that's after that's at least 2020. So you would have some type of storage facility that ties in there and you would have a valve that would block that off and that facility would continue to operate for you know several days or whatever, whatever that is through that tank. Hopefully we would never have that situation come into play, you know, but that, that would be my thought process, whether it be a dedicated water tower or something like that, that held a volume of water and, and you know, you can isolate their systems and stuff like that, but, um, that was my thought process. And I don't, I don't know how we would achieve that. Well, there are lots of different grants out there yeah. for infrastructure like that right. yeah. to do tanks and, and water lines and things like that. Water Those water grants are out there. Well, and they have the land, but it'd be easy to design because. We can figure out their usage and then figure out their days in reserve. Right. You know, catastrophe shut down or whatever, other yeah, than electrical to run the pump. That would be their problem. I know, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, then that, that's something we need to, in our emergency, in this old planning, we definitely. Right. And I'm sure the county would also have the O option uh, for it. Okay. Um, so I was going to check it on the clothing allowance. Um, Ed had mentioned to us that um, employees cannot get paid for something they haven't earned and it has to go through payroll, and that's why the clothing allowance wouldn't be a good option. Okay. All right. Gets into that into that. Well, and if you yeah. go by a house or a car, you can't claim it as income either. So it doesn't really do them any good for that. Yeah. 
We worked hard. You did, Tracy. You did a good job. And um, just hope if you have any questions or anything, just contact us. And we'll try. Leave your phone on this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, it's because, you know, this commission is wanting to help our staff and our employees. Okay, that's, that's the goal. And yet we're hindered by our revenue situation. So, uh, you know, the more data and feedback that we can produce on a regular basis, so we can continually monitor where we're at helps us to make decisions and we can always like if we were to take the final budget and that was the proposal is basically extend this year's budget start it off next year and then continue to monitor our grt that's coming in here get uh some uh accountability on some of our funds as far as water and wastewater and all of that and start in injecting funds that are non-realized then with this continual data we can say okay not only are ma we maintaining where we were we're starting to creep up and we're starting to show i my opinion is i don't like taking money that we have earned and interjecting it into the forward so i understand to meet the budget it, it has to look like that but then that's just not a good business idea to inter interject money that is in your savings account for a rainy day uh, which can be water wastewater um the sweep of in, I mean, all kinds of things that are the obstacles and uh, road bumps that are out there that we can't foresee. You know, it, to me, it's not a good idea. So we're gonna, you know, we need to maintain with what we've got. We know where we're at, and then our go, our objective is let's get some money to our employees. And let's get everybody to a market a market value or whatever and that's that should be our goal so uh, we appreciate it i um I, i'm glad that you talked to uh ed on this because you know everything's a great idea until you say oh you can't do that oh this is a problem with other whatever so i know in your short tenure You've got two and a half weeks right under your belt. Okay, Monday night, it would be interest of this commission for you to have a recommendation. Okay, not tonight. With and that would you know at least put some forth off with their input and everything else, and then give us some really something to and if you want to do it before then, I know it's a call order, but you know, reach out to us if I'm just not. Absolutely. Want to ask some questions on some of these papers? <laughs> Maybe not. Matter of finance, interim budget. We have professional services for two hundred thousand dollars. Is that for Ed? And it's not just Ed. It's for any. What we tried to do uh, last year's budget some people needed professional services and finance catches everything right um and so we kind of went up a little bit on that so we could catch more of the stuff that comes in because i know like shannon sometimes does po's under my under finance and it takes it out of my budget because she doesn't have that particular line or it's i don't well, know it's, it's, it's things saying. like magic credit cord and um just like the uh, the bug spraying and all that in the different buildings, youth center, plus it really don't have like a big budget. budget. Yeah. So there's numerous things included into that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, 
Magistrate Court too, by the way. They're paying 30, 38, 30, 38, 000. 000. Yeah. Basically, if you get 38,000, uh, we pay out 35,500. They give us 2,500 a month after the notice paid off, which covers uh, janitorial maintenance uh, um, and, and repairs. It's a little tight, but really? Yeah. That includes uh, utility. It doesn't, yeah. It's, it's supposed to cover utilities as well. It's good luck with it. Yeah, we'll just have a water leak there this week. Have you done that? Another uh, executive interim budget says youth sports for $117,000. That's that franchise tax. I mean, the franchise from Lee County Electric, we put mm -hmm. it in there so we can start spending it. Okay. And we have been, like, uh, with the baseball fields, having them sprayed. Um, I'm not sure Jason's been doing a little bit on those, so on the baseball fields. Yeah, we haven't sprayed this year, but I'm trying, uh, you know, trying to find better uh, solutions to where uh, we're not having a huge expense every single year. We've been mm -hmm. reduced instead of spending, like, um, five to six thousand per field, uh, we can spend maybe you know six thousand and just do all fields. So, I, this is a franchise. Tax. Yes, I spoke to um, he used to work there, Mike Ferris. Mike Ferris, he came in and sat down with me and he was asking if we've been using that money. And I told him, Well, I can't tell you what happened previous, but I can tell you as of now, we have been okay. Because that was a question yes. I wanted yes. to make sure that. The lighting is being utilized for what it's the money we're getting from the county electric every month is going towards you. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, our fire protection interim budget. I see we had operating transfers in of a hundred thousand dollars. What was that? That was last year. They had to roll that money in. They didn't spend it all, mm -hmm. and so we had to roll that into the budget. So that probably shouldn't be on there. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, senior citizen center salary and wages. I just wanted to make sure that was correct. Two hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. The state pays their salary to make fifteen to fifteen a week, right? Yeah, states pay them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll they just raise that. everybody to fifteen. That was the bottom and. Yeah. I think they gave them all a certain percent to mm -hmm. uh, increase yeah. all everyone. So is this money coming from the state yeah. that mm -hmm. they're paying this and it's not coming out of the city? No, mm -hmm. it's coming from the state. All their wages are. All their wages. And then the states just gave them a, a bump. Mm -hmm. That's why it's probably a little higher. But, yeah. Okay, while we're while we're right there though, again, these if the state is First of all, has already given them an increase. Right. Did you comp did you pull those salary and wages out of this budget? Exactly. We weren't sure on that, so we did include them, but we can take them out if we need to because we weren't sure on that. We knew that the state was paying that and had increased it for them up to the 15, and then the people that were already making over 15, they got a certain percent too. I remember if they came in and told me about it. So we we didn't know if the city was going to go ahead and get, include them in the five percent or not. But if we don't pay them, then right, right. Yeah, but yeah, but when you're looking at your, when you're so, so if the state gives them three hundred thousand, we give them three hundred thousand. Is right. that is, is that center overall, or is that including pay? I thought it was overall crazy, isn't it? I don't know. I have to look. I think it's so overall. I think it's more facility wise, not pay. Absolutely. So we match what the state gives us. We do do that. We do. If they give them 300000 we have to give them 300000 Because if you look at it that way, that's the same as a $30,000 per month, not quite 30000 uh, 30000 per month GRT increase. Because if, you know, if you look at our, but if their salaries are coming out of here, then the revenue to repay their salaries should be coming in. Uh, in addition to yeah, so let me let me do some more digging and make sure on that. But I know that I spoke to Faye and that's what she so I had talked to her about it too, but I wasn't sure if we paid a percentage of their salary since we pay a percentage of their 
facility. Yeah, we have a little better understanding and find out how that affects our budget. Yes. Let me let me do some digging into that and check Thanks. on it. And I'll be back with you on it. That's okay. Yeah. I won't ask any more questions. <laughs> My final question that I know of at this point is, did we for sure 100% know that we got our liability insurance and everything else yes, sir. in here? Yes, sir. I made sure. I, I will not question you. The last meeting, I made sure. I will not question you anymore about it as long as you. Okay. So I won't have to go looking for it trying to figure out. Where it all adds up. Yeah, I'll put it on one line. That's what we talked about. Just that, it's a minuscule portion of the budget, but there are some slight changes to the service agreements with the Chamber, EDC, Main Street, and Museum. But if anybody had any questions on those entities, I can answer those. Um, that been small increases, but it does not expose the general fund. It's all out of larger steps. Will Lodger's tax sustain that? Because Lodger's tax is currently at 90,000. We have 16,000 in obligations through the end of the fiscal year. So that takes us to 70, uh, 74,000, um, and it would sustain it. Yes. And there's a provision in the contract that if Lodger's tax dries up, they can't come after us in the general fund for the extra funds. So we are not exposed at all for the increases. <laughs> I know Since you were an integral part of putting together one of the budgets, okay, do you feel confident that the, just you're only speaking for the one you helped put together that they will be able to stay within that budget? And go? Yes. Okay. Realize that for the next minimum, absolute minimum of four months. You're responsible for making sure the other 12 departments <laughs> follow that same lead. He did tons of things. Oh, tons. Uh, it's like uh, what another department could get. You uh, get tons as a of department money. head, I would check Tyler every week to see when. And I'm not going to say I did go over it a little bit, but I knew when. Anyone. And, I let know, and we, yeah. we do have a meeting tomorrow with Clear Gov. Clear Gov. Because we're trying, yes, we're trying to get that moving along so we can get on that the software and everybody will be able just to go in and pull reports and know where they're at. And I think it's extremely important, no matter who the city manager is, is to be with their uh, get with their department heads on a, a minimum monthly basis on budget related uh items to see where each department is tracking on their budget. But in order to do for the department heads to be able to do that, you need to empower them. Our department heads don't know how to use time. So they're not, able, for the most part, they're not able to track their budgets of time. So we need to get training on that or this new system because it, you know, the city manager oversees them, but they've got to be monitoring their budgets themselves on a weekly or a you know, for a monthly basis. And then you can see how you do it. You can't be flying blind. Okay. I think the clear gut will go. Tyler, so. Tyler is so hard. 
and it's flexible and yeah. Um, and the third dog I think is twenty seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I think that's what the county uses. It is. Questions? Any more or any further questions? Comments? Seeing none, the items of the agenda have been exhausted. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.